Thank you for having us, uh, Ortiz. We are from Mexico. Um, I'm studying uh, applied mathematics and computing. I have two years of experience in the fintech sector, and also I have developed mobiles and web applications. Hey, hello, I'm Raúl Cibaja. Uh, I also studied applied mathematics and computing. I have two years uh, of experience in the fintech sector and one year in the development of mobile applications. Uh, we have gone to several hackathons uh, in which we have present uh, proposals such as implementing, ba uh, implementing banking in a virtual, uh, sorry, in a virtual assistant so that way uh, people can check their balance accounts or make movements in their accounts uh, with, your, uh, with just a voice command or instruction. Uh, several banks uh, have taken in, uh, take it as reference to implement it in, in their mobile applications. So we want to talk about the financial inclusion problems that we face in Mexico and also about the challenges that exist and the short term solutions that we have proposed uh, as well as what we have implemented according to the new regulations of agreements that the Mexican government has. Uh, well, currently there is a big problem with financial inclusion uh, in Mexico, 78% uh, of Mexican adults are ex excluded uh, from the financial sector because uh, they don't have uh, a, bank, a bank account or um, any, any uh, inclusion with uh, banks. There are uh, more than 2,000 of municipalities uh, that exist in the country and 42% of those uh, have access to financial services, 25% don't have access to financial services, 16% uh, only have two access channels to those services, uh, 11 only have uh, correspondence, 3% only have ATMs, and 2% only have bank branches. The use of cash in the country is too high. According to the Bank of Mexico, nine of the 10 Mexicans use bills and coins um, to cover their daily expenses. Um, part of this is caused by, by informality and fear of oversight. But in any case, today in the country, the use of money is the main competition of um, digital media although it is more insecure and inefficient. On the other hand, there is mistrust in financial institutions. It is common for people to choose the mattress over the saving accounts. That's real in, in our country. Insecurity, deception, and poor customer service are values sadly associated with banks in the national territory. Uh, well, in... Uh... Some parts of the world, and mostly here in Mexico and Latin America, discrimination is a, a branch where, whether based on skin color, how you dress, or socioeconomic status, are uh, some of the factors uh, why people don't go to the banks. In 2018, um, the, there was a, a study where the, the where the, this study measured discrimination by skin color in bank branches. For the experiment, six selected three with fair skin and three with brown skin, who made around uh, 600 uh, visits to branches in all delegations of Mexico City. Uh, upon leaving each branch, they answer a questionnaire on perception of discrimination. The results show a history of skin color discrimination. In 25% of the visits, the brown actors perceived that the exec 
uh, executive was root against 11% in the case of the light skin actors. The result of the experiment showed that the brown skin actors felt less uh, treated and were less frequently considered potential clients by bank executive, executives in the Mexico uh, city de delegations. Well, so now we want to move about digital banking. Is one of our solutions with um, Finorac. So, well, let's talk about digital banking. Um, the services offered by Banking in Mexico and in the world have changed notably in recent years, going from a traditional form of branch services to telephone banking, um, then to electronic banking, and now to financial services on mobile devices and ident identification biometrics, among other advances. Um, there are two types of digital banking in Mexico, those that are emerged as independent entities from traditional banking and that operate with an, electrical, an electronic money, money license, and those that are associated with traditional banks that therefore have the banking of large entity. In both cases, because you have a license, the money is safe. In addition, in Mexico, the, um, there is the law to regulate financial technology institution. Um, there is no uh, no lie as fintech. We have our law, mm -hmm. and this law protect um, financial institutions um, about um, digital banking. Um, we work in a company. Um, the company is in the um, fintech sector, so uh, we are going to talk about that in just a moment. Well, uh, some digital banks require uh, require you to do all your banking through your smartphone. This may lead to you uh, not being able to use internet banking from your computer or tablet. Uh, currently, the banks that we knew have been updating and developing uh, digital tools. In Mexico, uh, 182 digital tools uh, we identified. Uh, there are mainly four banks that have developed more than 40% of these existing tools. Uh, this means uh, that while some banks have been uh, concerned with offering digital uh, experience built on cutting edge uh, technology, offering personalized services, uh, easy to use and with an excellent uh, user experience. The digital developments of other entities show um, that uh, growth in digital channels may not be a priority compared to other activities of this business. The digital banking in Mexico in 2020 report highlights that are um, the main segment in which institutions have developed the digital tools, um, that is mobile banking, with 82% of the total. Um, then there was banking with 44 payments with 36% and savings, and investment with 33%. So now we are going to move to fintech. Yes, we, we are going to talk about the fintech sector uh, we, where we are working right now. And according to the Inter-American Development Bank, the number of fintech companies in Latin America uh, grew uh, about 66% in recent years whether uh, they are banking initiatives that are originally 100% uh, or traditional companies that have taken parts of this model, uh, fintech model, uh, and they uh, implemented in his organization. The fintech uh, entities that are uh, by his own are known as new banks, fintech banks, or challenger banks. And those uh, 
has increased in the last years and have benefits uh, with each digital banking proposal. In Mexico, there have been few startups, um, success stories. Uh, while we can boast of being the country on the continent with the largest number of fintechs, most still do not have scale and are very um, early stage of raising capital. Um, the fintech world requires comprehensive solutions that allow institutions to have absolute control of their operations through automation that allows um, compliance, uh, more efficient process. Um, accounting up to date, improve um, competitiveness, and uh, better custom services. Well, uh, we are going to talk about uh, some digital banking challenges that presented here in, in, in Latin America. We define six key points as challenge uh, challenges that digital banking has today. Um, the first one is the generation uh, gap. Banks must offer services to customers who are not digi digital natives at the same time at, as those who, who are digital um, customers without uh, with, with digital native uh, tools. Uh, the financial technology or fintech institution are a uh, one of the other challenges that are presenting right now, because the banks have the option of allying uh, with these types of companies or be the uh, competition of, of those. Uh, the evolution of the business models are the, it, this is the third point of the challenges because the digitalization has generated the possibility of developing new business models that do not require physical spaces such as uh, branches. And the other three, three points of, of these challenges as the, uh, is the financial inclusion. Although banks have great opportunity to reach 30% uh, of the Mexican population that's the, uh, that not have a um, fina uh, financial product, if they do not adapt uh, their model, they will not be able to surpass fintech companies in this mission. The organization structure uh, that are uh, the banks that are large institutions with long and uh, internal process, so they just uh, need to modify them and uh, be more efficient. Next, uh, there are some secu security um, problems because the digitalization of banks possess uh, security challenges. Uh, like uh, there are some attractives to cyber criminals. And uh, well, today there are uh, about 7.4 million banking users in Mexico, but only 1 million uh, of them are in rural areas and there are, uh, and there are uh, having a great challenge to the banks. Okay, now let's move to talk about the COVID and the problems we have to face with this. Um, so, since we have been isolated, um, uh, there is a study about this and about the visits in the banks. And bank branches in Mexico can register up 30% fewer visits as a result of the coronavirus. Banks can potentially say the adoption of mobile for banking as well as provide their flexibility that their clients need to overcome the crisis. Um, since the adoption of digital channels and online banking has grown as a result of social distancing, uh, measures revealed the study that um, the visits in the banks has been fewer than other time. 
Um, the trend towards the digitalization of banking uh, have been accelerated by social isolation measures during the COVID uh, pandemic. However, there is still um, resistance or difficulties in using online banking services by some customers. So banking institutions must use different means to educate customers about their benefits and practic practicality of their digital services. Um, we have some regulations in Mexico, as in every country, and financial services in Mexico are highly regulated. Um, there are clear reasons for this. It is important to take care of the health of financial system and maintain people's trust in it, uh, protect people's savings and prevent crimes such as money laundering. However, this regulation results in a high cost of compliance and in order to justify this cost, it is necessary to have a large scale, something difficult for a startup. Uh, well, uh, what Mexico is currently looking for um, financial inclusion with a social focus, uh, the economy ministry uh, launches a new financial product in the last days, uh, is known as a productive uh, direct credit. This is uh, focused on a small formal business that seeks of, of strength. Uh, these economic units in, in the face of the current health uh, contingency uh, caused by the coronavirus. The economy ministry launches a, a new modality of microcredits focused on formal small business that seeks of, of strength and uh, well this is a, a program that is placed to uh, support 10,000 uh, fin financing uh, areas uh, that are uh, most affected by this situation so why we decided to use open source um, as we know, currently there are a large of there are a large number of banks in Latin America and in the world uh, that use open source to carry out their most important operations. This type of open platform helps to modernize IT systems, making it a priority to for Latin America companies to adapt to business models and digital services and become part of the phenomenon of digital transformation. In this environment of permanent in innovation and change, open source or open source has managed to respond with reliable and innovative solutions. Despite the fact that in the past open source companies had to face obstacles because many organizations didn't fully understand this type of software, especially they had doubts about how technology developed in completely open and free environment could be safe. Uh, and well, uh, we, uh, for, for the final, uh, we are going to talk about uh, why we use uh, MIFOS and, and FINARAC for this implementation. Uh, and well, in order to meet the challenges and needs that currently exist in Mexico, with the huge uh, digital and financial gap, it takes four main factors. The first is uh, access, penetration of the financial system in terms of infrastructure available to offer fin financial services and products that is uh, to the points of contact between financial institutions and the population. Uh, the second is the use. The, the use of um, the uh, one or more financial products or ser services, as well as the with which they are used. This refers uh, to the demand for financial services, which in turn reflects uh, the behavior and needs of the population. Third is uh, the consumer uh, protection and defense. It refers to the fact um, that financial products and services, new or, or existing, 
are under a framework that guarantees at least the transparency of information, uh, fair tra treatment, and uh, effective mechanism uh, for the attention of compliance and advice from clients against, against uh, unfair and abusive practices. And uh, the last one is the financial education actions so that the population acquires aptitudes, uh, abilities, and knowledge to be, to be able uh, to carry out uh, correct management and planning of their uh, personal finances, as well as evaluate the offer of financial products and services. And uh, well, and for the correct ex execution of these factors, a bank that complies with the guideline uh, is first needed. And the main tool of banking is the core system. That is why in recent months, we have collaborated in implementing FINARACT in the bank from which the government wants to offer social programs with a social focus. So, for this solution, we are using Finerac One and Finerac CN. Um, we use Finerac One for all credit development, all the loans, and uh, such as direct loans um, that support uh, Americans who were several affected by COVID. Uh, this development allows uh, the population to apply for a loan and sync the contract virtually so you don't have to go to the offices and sync your, your contract. Um, due to the pandemic and the social distancing, this is a good opportunity for people who, who lost um, their, um, their way to provide uh, their families and we can give them uh, loans just by asking or requesting your loan in our web page. Um, and we use FINER Accent uh, for the entire procedure, such as um, offices, dispersions, and social programs. Uh, the social programs uh, help people, such as students, older adults, single mothers, and these social prog programs are provided uh, for the Mexican government. And um, uh, well, MIFOS, um, is, as, as you know, is an open source financial software. Uh, it is possible to offer affordable, uh, adaptable, and accessible solutions for any market segment. <clears throat> segment. Um, thanks uh, thanks uh, to, he, to this flexibility. It was adapted to comply with Mexican regulations. It was also connected with the electronic payment system and digital channels such as web banking, mobile banking, uh, were also enabled. And uh, well, Latin America has become a world benchmark where social mobility is hampered by public policy, uh, policies access to information and therefore to financial services. The use of open source FINERAC in this particular case allows uh, to be the base of the ecosystem that is changing the difficulties in opportunities for public and private institutions uh, the, um, that have a perspective of social and financial inclusion. In the proposal, we expose the challenges we face in sharing knowledge to the FINERAC and open source community. So, well, this is uh, the um, information, the story that I want to tell to you guys. Um, we are trying to face the problem of uh, the pandemic we have right now in the world, and we are trying to help our country provide them, provide, providing them um, financial services with the use of digital banking and the open source. Um, so I don't know if you guys have some questions.
Uh, okay, so the, this is all. Thank you so much for joining this session, guys. If you have uh, some questions, I don't know. Mm. Um, okay, so Javier says, how many uh, financial institutions are using funeral in Mexico? So right now, hi, Javier, hey, right I'm now, call. Call. one bank in Mexico, um, well, we can say the name, but it's in one bank, one institution. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know if there is any other questions from the from the audience. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so thank you for for this uh, this presentation. It was very interesting. The work that you're doing in Mexico, it's uh, very important, and and uh, that 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 the issue and idea that the bank is is it's. It's wanting to migrate from from a traditional core banking to Finirac. It's something that it's it's a it's a good thing. It's a good signal for the community, and and I hope more more banks will join us in the future. Um, and also connecting Finirac to the ACH, the payments providers, to the different uh, actors in the ecosystem of financial institutions. Also, it's it's a, it's very invigorating, and congratulations for the work that you are doing in Mexico and for the community. I hope to see more of your Thank contribution. You. Uh, for your... sure, we we are looking ahead of uh, more institutions that use Finera. Um, well, we we keep the work here. Awesome. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm freezing. <laughs> I don't know if you can see me, but uh, yeah. thank you. And, and if there is no other question, thank you for your presentation.